So, air, water, they seem like really different things, but in terms of science, they're actually the same thing. They're both fluids because they both act in the same way. I mean, sure, water is more dense and heavier, so it contains more power than air, but the way they behave and the way they interact is actually very, very similar. Now, that's kind of cool, I think, but what do you do with it? Well, let's say, for example, you want to look at developing a whole new wind turbine. Now, where would inspiration be? Now, if we look at the early development of things like water wheels and wind turbines, it's pretty easy to note that they were, in fact, the same thing. They were basically just big paddles you pointed into the stream of water or air, and it turned the rotor. So they were just really simple and identical. Of course, it didn't take long to turn those paddles into buckets to improve the efficiency. But the early machines were terribly inefficient. Water wheels had a kind of 30% efficiency, and windmills were probably even worse than that. But around about the mid-1800s, they started to go their own way, with people looking at how to improve the efficiency of one or the other. And even now, if we look at things like boat propellers and modern three-bladed wind turbines, the relationship is pretty obvious. When we go back to the 1800s and start to look at how water wheels began to develop into water turbines, then you see some really interesting things that could act as inspiration, because one came along called the Pelton wheel. The Pelton wheel raised the efficiency incredibly, actually, to about 98% or so. It was amazing. And it worked because in the wheel you had a bucket, and the bucket was shaped. So as the water ran down, it would hit the bucket, and of course you would get the push from the water hitting the bucket, but it would turn the water around at 180 degrees, and you would get a back push as well, allowing so much energy to be extracted from the water that the efficiency shot up. Now this idea of turning that force around 180 degrees wasn't applied to wind turbines because they'd gone their own merry way. But I was looking at this and thinking about how we might be able to improve wind turbines using that simple Pelton idea. And in video 1989, we created this to try to exploit that, that aspect of it. And I think it was a very interesting design. Now, I realised that I didn't release the design, I actually kept the design private, which was uh, pretty poor of me, really. So, I've now released this design on Tinkercad, no, sorry, on uh, Thingiverse, and you'll find the Thingiverse link in the description at the bottom. But essentially, it is a Pelton wheel with blades on it. So, the idea here is that the air hits there flows over that wing shape, which is a, a NACA wing design, I can't remember which one it is, but it flows over that wing shape into this Pelton bucket, and then is turned 180 degrees around. So as the wind comes here, it hits this, flows as it should do, hits that, and is forced back and out to give you that turning effect. Now, I've never measured the efficiency of this, but it strikes me that that would be an interesting thing to do, is to look at the efficiency of something like that, to see whether we've got more efficiency because we've added this Pelton bucket onto that wind turbine. And that was the basic idea of that video. Now, this doesn't have a top on it because it wasn't strictly necessary, and you could, I suppose, put a top. But you need some way of exhausting anything that's trapped in there or the pressure will build up, which is why I left the top off. But if you put a ring on there with a hole, then that guide cone would allow that to exhaust as the wind was hitting here. Equally, of course, as is the problem with all of these circular turbines, the wind, as it comes, will hit both sides. It'll hit here and here, and there's a counterforce there, which is one of the reasons Savonius turbines actually struggle. So a guide here, or a block there, would allow the wind only to hit that side and would probably improve the efficiency even more. So, why am I bothering with this when I've done this before? Well, somebody asked me a question about the overall use of it and how they might actually use it in a real application, and it made me realise I hadn't released the design, which was my bad, I just didn't get around to it. So I wanted to ask, answer those questions that had been asked and let you know that this design was now available on Thingiverse, a link in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.